Do you know the difference between semi and full custom VLSI designs? Do you know where the APGA and standard cell based designs fit into this? Let us start our journey to know all the answers. We are going to discuss the below points. ASIC tree and its branches, full custom ASICs, semi custom ASICs, get array devices, programmable logic devices that is PLDs, PLA, SPLD, PAL, and CPLD. We'll go in detail in later slides. Next, we'll discuss about build programmable get array that is commonly known as FPGA. We'll talk about a side by side comparison of all of the mentioned type of chips with respect to PPA, cost and turnaround time. Also, we will do a engineering comparison based on the figure of merit. Finally, when all these are done, we will summarize our entire discussion. So we are done with this particular slide. So let's move on. ASIC tree and its branches. First, ASIC is divided into first the full custom and the semi custom. In later slides, we'll go in vivid detail of each of them. Here in this slide, we are just going about the P and its branches. As you can see, the full custom do not have any subdivisions, while the semi custom have the subdivisions starting with analog array, gate array, standard cell ASIC, and programmable ASIC. Now, the first three do not have any subdivisions, and the programmable ASIC is further subdivided into PLDs from PLA, PGA and FPGA. So this is a kind of bird's eye view of the entire ASIC tree and its branches. So we are done with this particular slide. So let's move on. Full custom ASICs. These are designs which are to be fabricated in extremely super high volumes of production and sales. That means the super volume of sale is assured when we are making such designs. So those are only go for the full custom design. These are designed under special condition as when no suitable existing libraries exist. That means whatever we are designing, we do not have any pre-designed cells for them or existing library cells are not fast enough that means they cannot reach up to the speed or available pre-designed and characterized cells consume too much power or area with respect to the intended design that means we are not meeting the power and area criterion we continue with few further details about the full custom assets a chip is designed from scratch, hence time taken to the design of an IC is longer in full custom assets. All of the logic cells, circuits and their chip layout are handcrafted by design engineers. Here nothing is pre-built or pre-cooked. Everything is started from scratch and built step by step. Here each individual transistor and interconnection between them are designed by hand. Mask layers are created by hand in order to fabricate a full custom IC. This is another very important because this part is in the physical design. Chip performance maximized and area is minimized at the cost of human labor hours. This is quite evident from all the points we have so far discussed. And this is the purpose of the full custom ASIC so that we can have a chip which is very high performing and it is assured that the sales will be maximum. Full custom ICs are the most expensive to manufacture and to design. Advantages Complete design flexibility, high degree of power performance area optimization that is PP optimization and the smallest die size. So these are points that a full custom ASIC do have inside it. What are the disadvantages? Large amount of design effort and is very expensive. A few examples, microprocessor, sensor, actuators, analog, digital, mixed signal design communication chip. Here we are done with the full custom ASICs. Let us move on to the next slide. Semi custom ASICs. In semi custom design, a portion of the circuit function is predefined and unalterable. I again emphasize unalterable, while other portions are alterable as per need. So some part are alterable and some part are unalterable. Pre-designed, pre-tested and pre-characterized standard cell libraries or pre-configured arrays are heavily used in this kind of design. 
Other mega blocks such as microcontroller or microprocessor are full custom blocks. Many other ready to cook blocks such as system level macros SLM, functional standard blocks FSB and IP cores are also available to add into the chip making recipe. This can be included. In the chip layout, location of the building blocks and wiring between them is fully customized to handcrafted physical design. It's customized through automated physical design. Reusable cell library reduces the human effort for the design closer before tape out. This signifies that total human hours are less, much, much less than the full custom asset. Consequently, semi-custom ASICs are less expensive for production. Okay, what are the advantages? Time and money saver and reduce the risk associated whatever we have with our full custom design. Mostly, this is pointing to the human errors and their correction timings. Disadvantages, long manufacturing time and high non-recurring engineering cost. So this point is very, very important. There is no recurring engineering cost. That means many things are rebuilt and they can be reused. That means some part of the design, which is unalterable, can be reused in multiple semi-custom assets. What is the disadvantage? Long manufacturing time and high non-recurring engineering cost. Few examples, Hernet chip and hard disk controller. So we are done with this particular slide. So let's move on. Gate array. Identical cells are prefabricated in the form of two dimensional array on the gate array. Parts of the chips are prefabricated while the rest of the chip are custom fabricated for any intended design. There are two types of gate arrays. One is the channeled gate array and another one is the channel-less gate array, which is also known as E of gate arrays. In the channeled gate arrays, empty spaces are set aside between the base cells to accommodate the wires. In channel-less gate array, no such predefined spaces are set aside for the routing between the cells. Interconnection wiring are done above the cells. Advantages. The advantage is cost saving due to the identical structure. We are talking about the channels of the gate arrays. Those are very much identical structure. What are the disadvantages? Performance is not at par the full custom or the standard cell based as so gate array has some advantage also have some disadvantages that is it lags behind the performance of the full custom or standard cell based as so done with this particular slide. So let's move on. Programmable logic devices PLDs. A PLD is a ready to cook chip block for implementing logic circuit. Transistor and wires are already pre existing on it. So they are pre existing, we have to program. Logic cells and interconnects can be programmed, I emphasize, programmed by the end user to implement the specific design. No need to create custom mask for each custom. Up to the point discussed here, we have a common block where the transistor nets, everything are present, which has to be programmed by the end user. That's all. So the mask remains same for the all and we program it for different customers. Depending on capacity, complexity and architecture, it may be further classified into simple PLDs, also called SPLDs, complex PLDs, also called CPLDs, and field programmable gate array that is FPGA. Now let's talk about the advantages. These are used for low volume production with non recurring engineering cost, fast turnaround time. So the TAT is very high. What are the disadvantages? Larger chip size and lower performance. Obviously, based on the structure and the pre existing things, the chip become larger and we do have a performance lag because many things are not optimized. They are only programmed. So, we are done with this particular slide. So, let's move on. We'll talk about PLA, SPLD, PAL, and CPLD here. Programmable logic array, PLA, also known as SPLD. Here, logic functions can be realized in sum of products form. It's a very common terminology and you, I think you are already aware of this sum of product from your college days. A programmable AND array followed by a programmable OR array here. Next comes the programmable array logic device that is PAL. A device similar to PLA with improvement on its weakness. A programmable AND array followed by a fixed OR array. Here, the OR gate outputs are followed by flip-flop. Complex programmable logic devices, that is CPLD. A CPLD consists of multiple PAL-like blocks on a single chip with programmable wiring to connect the blocks. 
field programmable gate array. FPGA is a high capacity programmable logic device. FPGA contains array of programmable basic logic cells surrounded by programmable interconnect. All of these can be configured or programmed by the end user for intended design. That means you who are using the FPGA have the full control. Both combination and both combinational and sequential logic designs can be achieved in this type of array. Capacity roughly 1K to 1M logic gates, speed maybe up to 100 megahertz. And popular applications are prototyping, FPGA board based computers, ESP and logic emulation etc. We are done with this particular slide so let's move on. So far you are aware of all the subdivisions of semi and full custom VLSI designs. Now let us do comparative benchmarking for both the engineering and time to market point of view. PPA cost turnaround time. We will compare these three particular categories side by side for all the so far discussed type of assets. So here we are drawing lines to create the rows and columns and let us now draw first entry it will be full custom, next will be standard cell, next to it will be it array, next one is the FPGA. So vertical columns here we will fill up the criterions for full custom, standard cell, gate array and FPGA and in horizontal rows we will place one particular parameter on which we are doing the company. So our first parameter is chip area. For full custom it is minimum. For standard cell, it is minimum to moderate. For gate array, it is moderate. For FPGA, this is maximum. So here we are done with the first parameter for comparison. We are moving to the next row. The next parameter is performance. Full custom has the maximum performance. Standard cell have its performance somewhere in between maximum to moderate. While the gate array has the moderate. FPGA is minimum. Now we will be moving towards the next parameter that is manufacturing cost. For full custom it is maximum, for standard cell it is average, for gate array it is also average and for FPG this is minimum. Now this line has much more significant because you can see there are two averages because standard cell and gate array these are average in terms of cost while full custom is maximum and FPG is minimum. Now let us talk about the two maximum minimum case. Full custom we need a maximum human hours and hence the production cost goes high in terms of resources, human cost and everything. And for FPGA because it's a ready board here we have everything only the end user will program the cost comes to minimum and the standard cell and the gate array is somewhere average because these two lie somewhere in between the two extreme conditions parameter we are moving to the next parameter for comparison ptm that is time to market for full custom it is maximum for standard cell it's average for gate array it is average and for fpg this is minimum again here in the full custom we need human hours at large so the time to market is maximum and it is exactly opposite for fpg here human hours is very less before the entire product comes to market because only after it comes to market it goes to the end user and who is ready to program it so the time to market is minimum for fpg and the standard cell and the gate array lies in between in the average section so we are done here with the comparison for PPA that is power performance and area cost and turnaround time. So let us move on to the next slide. Here we are doing the engineering comparison. That means how an engineer feels with all these kind of steps. So if we put ourselves in the engineer shoe, how he or she will look into the comparison for each and every type we have so far discussed. And here we start our first row, close our first column with full custom. Second column with standard cell, third column with gate array and the fourth column will be the FPGA. So columns are same as previous slide. Here the parameters will be different and the parameters here is looking through the eyes of engineer. Cell area, full custom is variable. Standard cell has fixed height. We know that we have tracks in standard cell which are of fixed height. So even there could be families of different tracks inside a standard cell library. However, for one single family, the track height will be same gate array this is constant for FPGA this is only the full custom the area will be variable because this is extremely handcraft it's done we have talked about a cell area that is a single cell area not the entire area now the next parameter is cell families that is how many various type of cells are there in full custom it's variable because we are making the cells as per our needs so there is no prefixed categories for standard cell it is variable however there will be a certain type of prefixed categories 
for gator it is constant fpga it is programmable that means those gates are there we have to program them as an end user so this parameter comparison is done the next parameter is placement full custom it is variable standard cell it is row wise placement means we are placing the cells before varying and for gate array this is constant because it's already an array and for fpga this is also an array so this placement is constant so this parameter wise comparison is also done the next parameter is interconnect full custom it is variable for standard cell it is variable here the wearing is done at the bol layer where doing the metal and wear outs for gate array this is also variable and for APH this is program this particular parameter wise comparison also done our next parameter is layers full custom has all the layers standard cell also have the all the layers gate array has the routing only and fpga has none so these layers correspond to the physical design and full custom and standard cell they will have all the layers for available for the design gate array only have the routing because the fuel is done there the gate array only the routing layer will be available for you to use in fpga there is nothing because you have to program it so here we are done with the engineering comparison and let us move on to the next slide Full custom can give the best packing density inside the silicon die and performance. Full custom design is used for microprocessor and other complex volume applications. Faster design closure time and lower cost are the key success point of a standard cell over full custom. For large design, it is the best practice to partition the circuit into the smaller sub blocks which are designed using PIN. FPGA may be used for simple and low volume production. However, the gate arrays provide much higher density over FPGA. So folks, this is the compact summary and we are done with this particular slide. So let's move on. Thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. In case you have some dislikes, put that as in words in the comment section down below and bye for today.